Hello, um, apologies for the impromptu setup. I'm currently on holiday, but I thought that um, you guys might be interested in seeing a TV appearance that I did on the BBC. I got asked to go on the television show, The Big Questions, specifically to talk about has Britain become less tolerant? Um, I basically just, the rest of this video is gonna be that entire segment of the show. I didn't wanna edit it and cut it up, so it was like out of context. So you're gonna see all of the conversation. I will leave timestamps in the description for some stuff that you might wanna skip. Um, for example, there's some trans exclusionary stuff in there. So if that's not for you, have a look at the description. Um, I have a lot to talk about on this subject. I literally did an hour long interview, like pre-interview when they were deciding whether they wanted me on the show. So if there's anything in there that you want me to expand on, let me know. I've already done a video on trigger warnings, which I'll link somewhere that you can already see, but if there's anything else, let me know. I also just quickly wanted to say, I have a couple of video essays that I've like almost finished scripting that'll be up very soon. One of them is uh, mainstream, the future of queer cinema. And the other one is about the portrayal of LGBT activists on screen. So if uh, those are of interest and I guess consider of subscribing uh, if you want to see them in your sub box no pressure obviously do what you like um, I guess then on with the video Britain has long prided itself on being a tolerant nation live and let live keep oneself to oneself mind your own business but now the spotlight cast by social media shows some of us are not tolerant at all indeed uh, we now know that quite a lot of us um, could reasonably be described as at least one of the following uh, racist, sexist, homophobic, anti-Semitic, anti-Muslim, anti-immigration, anti-European, I could go on, I won't. Has Britain become a less tolerant society? Sheila, are we a tolerant society? And welcome to the big questions. Thank you. Um, I'm a child of the 60s. I grew up in Liverpool. You know, I've, I've always lived my life in a liberal way. Um, I've had huge freedoms. Um, you know, I've always believed, you know, all you need is love. Mm. But um, I've realised that the freedoms that we have um, I think are under threat at the moment. Mm -hmm. I think that the free speech, free expression, what I might have called liberalism, um, has been quite short-lived. You know, I was born in 1961. In 1960, you couldn't read Lady Chatterley's Lover or Ulysses because they were banned. So I, I believe in not banning things. I believe in um, participation with people that we may disagree with. And I think this is the problem. This is the threat at the moment. What do you think about the culture of no platforming and trigger warnings and all... I stuff. think that is all censorship by any other any other um, description, you know. So <laughs> we, it is absolutely essential that we share spaces with ideas that we find uncomfortable. The debate that we've just had, aspects of it, I found incredibly uncomfortable. I'm not a member of a church, but I'm really interested to engage with people and to discuss what are these points of disagreement. However, offensive. However offensive, however divisive those beliefs might be in the other person, even if the other person is spouting pure lies, we should not take them off the platform. We need to engage with them. It's the only way we reach a point where we understand our own beliefs. Yeah, Rowan, as a YouTuber, there, 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 is, a, there is a worry, there's a concern that some people are very, <coughs> very, uh, have a very, I suppose, this narrow definition of what is acceptable thought. If anyone veers from that, there are no platform, there need to be trigger warnings. What do you make of that? So I think that there's a misunderstanding fundamentally of some of these kind of words, right? Mm -hmm. So twig trigger warnings, for example, are not about censorship whatsoever. The idea of trigger warnings is that you create a space in which people can actually engage with what's, what's being talked about. Um, and we have them everywhere. We have age ratings on films. Mm -hmm. Are they not trigger warnings? We have on the news, this report may upset some people. Those are all things that we have already, but because they're not labelled as trigger warnings. Do you have them in literature as well? Um, you can do. So there's websites that you can go onto where you can look and see, OK, what is, is in this? Is this going to be difficult? And I think that it's not about trying to censor people, but it's about giving people the ability to engage in that work. But we're all adults. You know, the, the... Here's the, OK, here's the thing, and the reason why I find that very, very difficult, just mm. saying that as if adults, you get to the age of 18 and you should be able to deal with anything that the world throws at you. <coughs> we ha we're having a conversation in this country right now that we need to be having about mental health. I don't think that we can just say, on one hand, yes, we should support people with their mental health and then be like, but who cares if they're going to get find something really difficult if confronted with it. I have very, very serious phobias, medical phobias that came from a very traumatic experience in my childhood. When I was in biology class at school, um, the lesson before we did dissection, the teacher said, if there's anyone who won't be able to deal with this or has any problem with it, let me know so we can put in um, alternative educational resources. If I'd have gone to that lesson without that trigger warning, I still wouldn't have been able to do the, do the dissection and it would have been really traumatising for me. It would have been difficult for everyone else. I think within a classroom, um, teachers, um, leaders of all descriptions make a judgement and because, because we are... Um, 
generous people because we are driven by our humanity. Of course, we make adjustments. I don't think it's black and white. But I don't believe the whole of a curriculum or the whole of a university needs to adjust its policies so that young people who are entering adulthood are somehow protected from ideas that they may possibly find disturbing. So I suppose it's a matter of degree. I, when I was at uni, I didn't want safe spaces. I wanted dangerous spaces. Exactly. You, okay, but what is a safe space? That, Nick. Sorry? I think you can cope with that. In the medical profession, we have Sometimes. a preset which says, prime non nocere, mm. first do no harm. And I, I passionately believe in freedom of speech up to the point that it does harm. And we've just heard about harm that could have been done to you. I know many young pe LGBT people... We can address people. that. Speech. We can address that. ideas do not harm they us. They do. That's the whole they point. That's what all the research... Speech does not harm us. We no, discuss... I'm sorry. You say that as an LGBT person mm -hmm. who okay. has to hear homophobic views, they go on to commit suicide. Absolutely. That is harm. Sheila, I'll be back with you. <laughs> Caroline, I, you are... Um, you're a Catholic, but you're also somebody who's been accused on Twitter of being, and it's a, it's a derogatory term, it's a trigger warning for everyone, uh, a trans-exclusionary radical feminist, right? You don't buy the narrative that trans women are women. And this is a, a lively and virulent, virulent debate in our country at the moment. Um, you are what's called gender critical, and it's also informed by your faith. What are you able to discuss this online? I am, but only if I self-censor. OK, so I'm one of the few women who is left on Twitter able to discuss this, though every single day there is a team of activists screenshotting every tweet, seeing if they can report me to the police or to get my Twitter account removed. So I have to be very, very careful about what I say. There are people out there, there are feminists uh, out there who've had their Twitter accounts deleted, not because they have been rude, abusive or offensive, but because they have told the truth as they see it. They have said, I don't believe that men can turn into women or women can turn into men. Mm, and, and as well, That's there has offensive. even... There has, no, it's, it's a truth. It's a truth that we believe and understand. That's and there, there, is, the trans uh, there are transsexuals and transgender people out there who are also saying... There's one person, you may have seen the um, case in the, in the papers this week, uh, a transsexual called Miranda Yardley, who was taken to court for transphobia because he describes himself as a biological man. And he's had his platforms removed. Now, women and, you know, the tr tra uh, gender-critical uh, transsexuals and trans transgender people who say, look, OK, uh, we want to uh, present as a, a different sex to the one into which we were born, but actually we don't want to impinge on female rights. We believe that uh, toilets, changing rooms, intimate spaces, refuges, you know, having a smear test, that kind of... All, all the medical facilities, prisons is another crucial one. We believe that these should remain for, for women who are biologically women for their own safety. What, what, being no, censored. Uh, you find a fact that why should she not have the right to say this without being censored and without being abused? So I think that freedom of speech doesn't mean that anyone can say anything they want at any time with no consequences, right? Yeah, that's so that's does, fundamentally not what freedom of speech does. It's no, no, no. It's so in this country, we have laws against incitement to violence. We have yeah. laws against incitement to hatred. Those are things that, that, that are within our laws that say, actually, our freedom... We, do, we don't live in a, a, a country in which freedom of speech means that. If I am working in a shop and someone comes in and even very politely says something very rude to me, the manager can say, you're barred, you can't come in here again. But the thing is... that is, impinging so on the thing is saying, saying but, that, I say, but saying that men cannot turn into women and women cannot turn into men is not offensive, it's not hateful, it's not hurtful. We should have hurtful. a trans person it here is, to yes, speak to this. Who's... OK, wait, wait. wait. Can't Amelia. I can't believe we're having this conversation. Amelia, you had a fair chance. It's unbelievable. Well, you can't believe we're having this conversation. No. You can't believe... We're having, this conversation. we're having this conversation with this platform Isn't when you don't have problem? a trans That's person not here. Sheila. on television. Uh, Sheila, wait a minute. This. Not on the television, it's in these cameras. It's yeah. something that people have should, believed for 2,000 years since time immemorial. The, the BBC trans should. Experience is, as a non trans person, but somebody that is a feminist a and person, is yeah. also very trans positive. Mm. We, we work with the National Trans Youth Network and there are so many people within that network that have said, I have had to come off Twitter, I've had to come off social media because um, people who don't believe that the trans experience is, is real and that trans people are real, 
publish trans people's names and addresses but that's online to me. and people okay. are getting death threats all, all right, the time. All right. Right, the thing about tolerance is that we have to create a space for people to come on a journey of understanding oh, yes. and that isn't about vilifying people, it is about trying to build spaces that aren't aggressive spaces where people can have nuanced discussion rather than extremes. That's exactly it, the nuanced discussion. Is, Are we able to have nuanced discussion, Sheila? Well, in, increasingly, right it's, in increasingly it's more difficult to have those nuanced discussions, mm. but there, there is no alternative but to carry on trying to do that. So I don't, um, I don't believe that it's an extreme position. It's not one that I hold, it's not my position. Um, but having a conversation with you about can a man become a woman or vice versa, what are the biological determinants, and let's discuss that. Mm. I don't find it offensive what you've said. Of course and you if don't. I You're do find No, and it, it, Rowan, can I, I just it, say we are obsessed with identity. Absolutely. My, ide yeah. my absolutely. identity... <laughs> my, and that's, the, that's, the, that's the main thing I take away from these discussions. We are obsessed with identity. My identity is not as important as what I say or do. Because you're not yes. dying for it. I think that's why, the problem. Rowan, this is what... And we, we, discussed that, it, we, we discussed the issue which we just have unapologetically because I think it absolutely focuses on the whole right to debate, right to say things, but then, mm. of course, there is that line about what causes offence and what causes mental health issues. Rowan, why are some people so... Um, sensitive and concerned about having their world view challenged so here's the thing i i don't think that when we're talking about the idea of like britain being tolerant i feel like that's such a low bar mm. i i too think that having these conversations are important but i think that it shouldn't we should we have two we have two situations when someone says something that can be damaging to other people we have two things to do one of them is we can't ignore the damage that it causes mm. but also i think we can't ignore the fact that that person that isn't necessarily the viewpoint they're always going to have. The, I feel very privileged that I've come from a, a family who values equality, so I've never had to challenge that. But I'm under no illusions that if I live two streets down, I could be extremely racist because of the beliefs of my family that have passed down. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of friends who come from extremely evangelical religious backgrounds who have had to completely change their viewpoint. So I don't think people can't change, and I don't think we shouldn't have discussions mm -hmm. at all. I think that's it's really important. It's a good way important. to test our own opinions when we hear diametrically opposed Absolutely. opinions Absolutely, well. but, I, but, but I do but think that when, exactly. we're on, when, when we on are in an education environment for example inviting people for the view of balance who don't believe in climate change to we don't do to that talk about it. but no 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 it's not like, even, if we're if we're talking about no platform like evolution and climate yeah. change that's gone there's that's a kind reason of gone. yeah it's like this is Apart from northern Ireland. sometimes just people damien, having opinions damien uh, we have these uh, um social media pylons where somebody says something and it's a kind of it's like mm. the mob in the french revolution isn't it well, so, I think we all know that, that in, intolerance, particularly on social media, it, it is absolutely endemic. And that people, I think the most worrying trend in, in the country is the tribalism, that people surround themselves. You don't feel you can say anything <laughs> unless you have a large group of like-minded supporters who are going to sort of cover you because you're going to get so attacked. But I have to say that, I mean, I take on board all these uh, debates and I think there's a lot of interesting issues about gender and sexuality and things like that. But I see a pattern of tribalism and intolerance in a wider sense across Britain. Um, e even, for example, in the way that things are politically shifting. We're, we're in a country now that, for example, the ruling Conservative Party tends to have all its uh, power bases in, in country districts and more in the south of England. We're here in the north of England. I, I don't think people in the south of England are actually aware that in the city of Manchester, one of the most important cities in Britain, yeah. <laughs> there, is, there is no Conservative councillor at all. But the council is 94 out of 96 councillors are Labour. Until two years ago, every, every councillor was Labour. Now, when you get to that level, in what sense is democracy operating in Britain? And I don't mean that as point scoring against Labour, if you're a Labour supporter. But that's of what course people have voted for. That's absolutely fine. But I think what goes on in, in, for example, a city like Manchester is, it becomes increasingly, if, for example, you don't agree with that, you won't find, during an election, a Conservative poster anywhere. And that's not because there are no Conservatives in Manchester. Of course there are. But putting up a Conservative p poster has become something dangerous. 
you're going to get a prick through your window if you put up that. You might get your car but keys. Leave, leave and remain has been a similarly acrimonious. Absolutely. And if you are living in whichever way of that debate you happen to come down on, if you live on, for example, a street where people mostly support leave, or, or the other side, and you are the opposite opinion, I think you'll probably find you have to feel like you have to keep that opinion to yourself, because if you express that opinion, you'll be excluded. So and can... I think what we really want to get back to yeah. it, it is, a, it is a, a process that people are more accepting of difference of opinion. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I want to see, I mean, I get so frustrated when I get, even in local elections and things like that, that I get leaflets through the door telling me, uh, the Conservatives can't win here, or Labour can't win here, and it, it's trying to sort of exclude them from the process to make it this is our territory and nobody must come into it. And it's we, we, very, we... very, very tribal, isn't can it? We, we... I, I wanted to speak to Duane as well, who's with us, Duane Ryan Menezes. Uh, there, was a, there was a case this week, and I just mentioned as a lead into you, there was an academic called Dr Chris Hill, and it was reported, University of Lancaster, that he said in, a, in a, an email that we should ridicule and mock religion, which is something we have been doing since the Enlightenment, uh, with cartoons and comedies and jokes, but of course there are certain religions in this country now that will not tolerate it, whether, you know, it, which is kind of, people argue, a cultural imposition, because it's what we do. But are you worried about that kind of new wave of intolerance coming in? Oh, absolutely. When you think about rights and freedoms, like the freedom of speech or the freedom of religion or belief, these freedoms and rights apply not to ideas, they apply to individuals. Ideas do not have rights. Individuals right. do. The moment we attribute rights to ideas and make ideas no-go zones for discussion, we are depriving individuals and, 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 and going into this really dangerous territory where we are stifling debate, we're not addressing issues. The very issues Jane has so eloquently described as affecting people in their lived experiences in their daily lives, we're not really addressing those. We are burying them under the sand uh, you know, for another day of discussion, of heated discussion. I think what's more important is to have these articulated, have these challenged, and in order to do that, we really need to create a safe space for multiple views. I'm going to use the same term, but redefine it. A safe space where multiple views can be brought in. You've reappropriated the term. But that I, is what they did. That is what it, yeah. but but that it is. It is not. If you it are is. a conservative yeah. at the side of my PhD at Cambridge, which one would assume is a rather conservative place? But no, if, you, if you're a conservative, you do find your views constantly opposed. There is a great amount of generic pervasive hostility mm. to anything representing traditional Christianity, to anything mm. representing mm. conservative views. Pride in Britain, the greatest stigma of all. Now, I come from a family, my family's originally from India, incredibly proud of Britain and British history. This is my country. I moved here in my lifetime, but I fly the British flag, I run around the world representing British interests, and do you know what? That, I get picked on for that, because to be proud of Britain is to be, again, it's, it's become a hypersensitive issue. But some people who plea for tolerance don't, do not want to tolerate that's, other people. No, that's exactly Precisely. right. That's exactly right. And, and the thing is, I think as well, we tend to have this idea that, as you said, that, you know, people... We, we have a controlling of thought here. So social media is piling on people. I got a pile on just last night. Oh, my goodness, she said this, and somebody said to their 76,000 followers, you know, she's a bigger, let's all pile on her, because they perceived that I think the wrong thing. Yeah, what would you like to say? You want to, I thought you wanted to say something. Am I right? Yes. <laughs> well, I believe that today we are in a place where we need to understand that all, great, great Britain is uh, great only because of the immigrants and the different diverse people who come here. And we need to understand that you, not everybody is brought up in the same style who can completely challenge views and who are their DNAs are not built up to speak and be confident in such environments, which is why we need to have some kind of accessible measures in place where, so that you make a friendly environment for people from diverse con uh, backgrounds to engage in conversations. Well, is that wrong to so, make it accessible But social media is not a friendly environment, isn't it? Some of the people who yeah. plead for tolerance are very intolerant on social media yeah. and there's a lot of yeah, violent abuse there. Problem. And they would never do it to someone's I'm face, would they, Daniel? Well, this is, this well, is, this is, this is, this is social media, <laughs> Society does have those measures in place. It, it has the law, and, and the law, no. and, and there is no law against being offended. Mm. Uh, and and every and I have got the right to offend you. 
There is nothing yeah. that, that, that there's nothing that, that says that I shouldn't <coughs> offend offend you. Unfortunately, mm. I, I abhor some of the stuff that that the uh, EDL say and Tommy Robinson says. I, I find it incredibly offensive. But but I would defend his right to say it. I will absolutely defend his right to say it, and then I will and then I will engage with it, and then I will rubbish it because it is rubbish. But I will defend his right yeah, to say okay. it. Stephen, it's great to have you back on the programme, and I'm going to give you another word here, but I'm a very quick one. What would you say to those people watching right now? There's going to be a flurry of stuff on social media about the programme saying, "How dare you have them on? How dare you have that person on? How dare you do that unchallenged? Why didn't you have something?" What would you say to them? I think we've forgotten how to celebrate difference in our society, and I think we need. One of the but great joys. Some people I... are intolerant of difference. Yes, well, that's exactly. I but cannot I... cope with people who are intolerant of it, uh, 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 of difference. All because difference. difference is something all, to be celebrated. You, you have to tolerate we... people who are intolerant of difference. Yes, I think probably you do have to be intolerant of people who don't cope no. with. But we've got a lot to tolerate now, haven't we? That's the thing. I mean, we've not touched on the issue of anti-Semitism. Her Majesty's opposition is riddled with the toxicity We're of anti-Semitism. We're out of time, and we debated that just a few weeks ago. We'll do it again. Thanks for watching. Have a really, really good Sunday. Goodbye from all of us here.